सो वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कवर अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टेक्निक एनालिटिकल टेक्निक कॉल्ड एज ए एल सी एम एस दैट इज लिक्विड क्रोमैटोग्राफी मास स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी नाउ दिस टेक्निक हैज बीन कॉल्ड एज अ हाइफिनेशन टेक्निक ओके वॉट डू यू मीन बाय द हाइफिनेशन सो हाइफिनेशन इन लिटरल टर्म्स मीन्स जॉइनिंग ओके जॉइनिंग और कनेक्टिंग नाव जॉइनिंग मीन्स दीज टू एनालिटिकली डिफरंट टेक्निक्स दैट इज लिक्विड क्रोमैटोग्राफी एंड मास स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी हैव बीन जॉइन बाय हाइफिन टू मेक इट अ मोर सीनरजिस्टिक इफेक्ट बिकॉज एज वी ऑल नो ईच टेक्निक दैट इज वेदर इट इज लिक्विड क्रोमैटोग्राफी और अ मास स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी बोथ हैव देअर ओन डिस्टिंगशन एंड ओन ज्यूरिस्डिक्शन ऑफ द वर्किंग एंड दे एक्सेल इन इट एज वी ऑल नो एल सी दैट इज लिक्विड क्रोमैटोग्राफी इज फेमस फॉर इट्स फिजिकल सेपरेशन ओके सो दैट क्रोमैटोग्राफिक टेक्निक इज वेरी यूजफुल फॉर द सेपरेशन ऑफ अ मिक्सचर ऑफ कॉम्पोनट्स एंड मास एनालिसिस इज इम्पॉर्टंट टू आइडेंटिफाई टू आइडेंटिफाई द कॉम्पोनट्स ऑफ द सेपरेटिंग मिक्सचर Synergistic analytical effect on a determination of unknown compounds separation as well as its structure determination. So LCMS is a technique that combines physical separation capabilities of liquid chromatography with mass analysis capability of mass spectrometry. It is a method that combines the separation that means separation from HPLC. with the detection capability of mass spectroscopy okay so that means the two capabilities of two distinct inst uh, instruments separation and detection separation of lc that is liquid chromatography and detection is of a mass will be combinedly used to gain a synergistic analytical effect in lcms we remove the detector now what exactly they have done they remove the detector of a liquid chromatography okay so the liquid chromatography detector has been removed from the column and fit the column to the interface to the interface through which it is connected to the ms okay so the arrangement is like this lc liquid chromatography consists of its own detector now you just remove that detector from the column and attach a interface this is a important term interface is important because these two instruments these two analytical instruments are very distinct in their operation as well as the requirements of analytical practicals and that's why to make them compatible with each other you need a certain instruments which has a capacity to make sure that these two instruments run smoothly and simultaneously and that is the column to that interface and that interface again gets uh, entered into the mass analyzer okay so this is how the instruments looks like it's simple okay in the most of the cases interface used in lcms is a ionization source so the ionization source which we have studied in case of mass spectroscopy are majorly used for uh, interface purpose okay now what is the theory behind it we already dealt it actually L hplc okay hplc is a method for separation we all know separating a complex mixture into its components high sensitivity of mass spectroscopy provides the information for identification of the compounds of structural elucidation of the compound what does it means hplc is master in separation and while mass spectroscopy with its highest amount of sensitivity is useful for identification of compounds or structural elucidation means hplc will separate out the components of a mixture and they gets transferred to the ms that is mass spectroscopy through interface and ms has excellent capacity or highest sensitivity to determine the structure or to identify the compound and this is what the theory is all about 
द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ दीज टू टेक्निक इज कॉल्ड द एल सी एम एस एट द मेटाबोलाइट्स एज द मेटाबोलाइट्स अपियर फ्रॉम द ग्रा एंड ऑफ द कॉलम दे एंटर द मास डिटेक्टर वेयर द सॉल्वेंट इज रिमूव नाउ वॉट इज एक्जैक्टली द प्रोसीजर इज दैट एज वी ऑल नो लिक्विड क्रोमेटोग्राफी कंसिस्ट ऑफ अ सॉल्वेंट सो एंड मास स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी डू नॉट विल डील्ट विथ एनी अमाउंट ऑफ सॉल्वेंट टेक्निक्स ओके सो यू नीड टू कन्वर्ट this is the primary and foremost important technique in case of lcms if you want to efficient analysis by lcms you need to make sure that the total amount of solvent gets evaporated either removed and the remaining metabolites or analyte needs to be ionized okay this component system looks like now when these ionize these ionize molecules he enters into the mass spectrometer the ionizing molecules then sorted out and identified according to their m by z that is mass to charge ratio on which the whole mass spectroscopy works we all know this so depending upon the mass to charge ratio these so called as ionized components of the analyte or a molecule get separate out this is what the procedure looks like the instrument is looks like this okay now it's not so simple that uh, we can use hplc and ms in tandem by just uh, attaching themselves into the interface okay so why we need interface if anyone ask you why we need interface in case of hplc ms or lc ms so there are two distinct analytical techniques remember these two are distinct lc and ms devices are fundamentally incompatible now why they are incompatible because the operation of hplc is in liquid phase we all know this but ms it is of vacuum origin you need to maintain the vacuum so there are fundamental differences or fundamental incompatibilities it works at a lower con uh, temperature 25 to 50 degrees celsius you need to ionize the molecules in case of mass spectroscopy so the temperature is higher around 200 to 300 or any uh, dalton range of uh, molecules but in case of ms we have the distinction or a limitation that up to 4000 dalton for quadrupole mass analyzer and even for other analyzers we have studied it that uh, bulky molecules or heavy molecules will not be ionized in case of mass spectroscopy inorganic buffers are required it requires volatile buffers because ms is dealing with the gaseous components okay so you need to maintain gaseous component as well as the vacuum outside the instrument so the vacuum volatile buffers are the requirements in case of mass spectroscopy but in case of hplc inorganic buffers are required now the next difference is 1 ml per minute is what the eleven flow standard eleven flow we have studied it in the hplc is equivalent to 500 ml per minute of the gas now suppose if you maintain the normal flow rate of the hplc also that is equivalent to 500 ml per minute of the gas but that is not acceptable in case of gas chromatograph uh, sorry mass spectroscopy G mass spectroscopy accepts only 10 ml 10 ml per minute and you are providing 500 ml per minute so this is the huge difference in case of hplc's output and ms inlet okay so these are some of the technical advantages sorry disadvantages by linking hplc and ms and that's why interface becomes important now wh what is interface now so we will have a discussion on interface lcms systems include a device for introducing sample such as hplc an interface for connecting such a device an interface is required in case of introducing the sample into the ms system electrostatic lens that efficiently introduces the generators ions a mass analyzer unit that separates ions based upon their mass to charge ratio and a detector unit that detects the separated ions so this is what the instrumental characteristics of lcms it requires interface ion source electrostatic lens mass analyzer and a detector unit 
in an lcms system however if the lc unit is simply connected directly to the ms unit the liquid mobile phase would vaporize resulting in large amount of gas being introduced into the ms unit now suppose if you directly uh, attach lc with the ms without introducing interface so as we all know even in case of last topic here it is if you introduce the 1 ml 1 ml per m, per minute eluents flow into the ms it results into 500 ml per minute of the gas and what is the actual requirement for the ms is only 10 ml per minute and you are introducing 500 ml per minute so the excessive amount of gas will be get introduced and that is not the efficient way for carrying out the operation under mass spectroscopy okay this would decrease the vacuum level because the excessive amount of gas will leads to the fluctuation in the vacuum level and prevent the target ions from reaching the detector because vacuum is required to maintain that uh, speed or the way in which that ions travel to the mass analyzer and reach to the detectors and if there is a decrease or fluctuation in the vacuum level because of increase in the inlet of the gas it results in and you will not get the appropriate results okay now what are the different types of interfaces now interfaces we already covered actually these are the ion sources specifically electro spray ionization thermo spray ionization atmospheric pressure ionization and atmospheric pressure photo ionization these uh, have been dealt in the mass spectroscopy itself so we will have a short discussion on this so the first electro spray ionization as the word suggest there is something electrons getting sprayed to generate the ionization okay so that is what the esi what is exactly the theoretical aspects of it esi draws the sample solution to the tip of capillary tube there is a capillary tube we will have a diagram also so first we will let the theory part to be covered where it is applies to the high voltage remember capillary tube applies to the high voltage is the first criteria a nebulizer gas flows you need to maintain the nebular flow of the gas nebular flow is a such a type of flow which results into spraying spraying of the sample so small droplets mein wo gas uh, sorry solvent aapka spray hoga this creates a fine mist of charged droplets charged droplets kyun kyunki aap logo ne voltage apply kiya hai aur uh, fine mist kyun create hogi kyunki aapne nebular gas flow ka maintain kiya hai now as the charged particles move the solvent continues to evaporate okay now the charged particle is moving uh, inside the capillary tube and and that results into the evaporation of the solvent thereby increasing the electric field on the droplets on the surface when the mutual repulsive force of the charges exceeds the inside the capillary tube it results into increasing electric field of the droplets now increasing electric field means increasing charges on the droplets now as soon as the force or mutual repulsive force on the charge exceeds the liquid surface tension as we all know spray or droplet can be intact by using the excessive amount of surface tension now if any uh, force inside the droplets get exceeds the surface tension this results into continuous breakdown of the droplets into even smaller droplets this process is called as a fission okay as this evaporation and fission cycle is repeated droplets eventually become small enough that the sample ions are liberated into the gas phase so the first evaporation then fission cycle then again evaporation then the fission cycle this cycle goes on continuously resulting into a very small droplets such that the sample is converted into the ions and liberated into the gas phase so this is how the esi works okay so this is the gas capillary where it is attached to a high power supply solvent is coming from the lc okay n2 is a carrier gas okay so these are getting 
नेबुलाइज नेबुलाइज मीन्स स्मॉल ड्रॉपलेट्स फॉर्म में वो स्प्रे होते हैं और वो सरफेस पे आने के बाद यहाँ पे आपका फीजन और इवेपोरेशन की प्रोसेस स्टार्ट हो जाती है एंड देन दिज सो कॉल्ड जनरेटेड आयंस आर जनरेटेड इन टू द इनलेट ऑफ मास स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर गेट्स इन टू इट नाउ द सेकेंड वन इज एटमोस्फिरिक एटमोस्फिरिक so called as atmospheric pressure and photo means a light okay to generate the ions the lc eluent is vaporized using a heater now here the vaporization is carried out by using the heater at the atmospheric pressure as the word itself suggests it is atmospheric pressure photo ionization so heater is used at the atmospheric pressure the resulting gas is made to pass now the resulting gas the gas is generated by using heater at the atmospheric pressure now this gas is generated and this pass through a beam of photons generated by the discharge of uv lamp which ionizes the gas molecules okay now what they have done they have heated heated the solvent the solvent resultant heating in the atmospheric pressure results into a gas okay now this gas travels and which then again interacted with the photons of the uv lamp and then these photons generate the charge molecules which are again pass into the mass spectroscopy okay so this is what the atmospheric pressure photo ionization so the application part of the lcms uh, lcms consists of a variety of domains of applications not only limited to the pharmaceutical applications it also has a biochemical application some of the short uh, applications i have listed it over here so the pharmaceutical applications includes rapid chromatography of benzodiazepines identification of bile acid metabolites in case of biochemical applications rapid protein identification using capillary lc ms 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 in tandem and database searching clinical application high sensitivity detection of patients identification of aflatoxins you are must be knowing that this is a toxin generated in the food so the identification can be possible by using lcms determination of vitamin d3 in the poultry feed supplements environmental applications are there detection of phenyl urea herbicides detection of low levels of carb carbaryl in the food forensic applications illegal substances toxic agents and explosives so these are some of the applications of lcms remember this technique is called as a tandem technique or a hyphenation technique because lc and ms are fundamentally different from one another and they have been attached or joined by using the tandem techniques or hyphenation technique using interface hence this technique is called as a lcms then there are multiple variations of this gcms is there which is also widely used then there is msms in tandem spectroscopic method so this is all about the hyphenation technique i hope you enjoyed this video uh, do like share and subscribe the channel thank you we will meet again in the next video